Welcome back, folks, to the Fantastical Bestiary, where we're talking Material UI. That's right, we've put in Material UI so it's working throughout our program here. Uh, we'll add some little extra things here and there, really get this thing jazzed up. Uh, but before we start doing that, what we need to do is start talking about how do we customize this? Because right, everything's very just material UI, which looks okay, but we could use some tweaking here and there. Uh, like this blue isn't exactly the same blue as our header. Maybe we want to change the color scheme altogether. Maybe we even want to go with a dark theme, right? Dark theme. Love dark themes. So how do we do that? How do we get this thing really polished and hitting on all cylinders? So what I'm going to do is we're going to go and actually figure out how do we customize the things attached to Material UI. Primarily, the th way we do this is through what's called theming. So I'm over here on the Material UI site, and we're going to click on the navigation, and we're going to go down to Customize. This is the area where you're going to get all the details on how to customize things. This is where you see their documentation, and what we're really wanting to look at is theming. It's got it all broken down inside of here. Uh, so you can do any kind of, like there's just an overview in general here of how you would be doing theming. Uh, but there's some things that we need to take care of and some things that we need to pass to do theming. So one of said things that we need to do is we need to import some new dependencies. So I'm going to jump over into the code and I'm going to import some new dependencies. Now, I've been working with Material UI for a while, so I'm going to walk you through how a lot of these dependencies are being put in. Uh, so you might not see me jumping back to the documentation a lot, but I wanted to show you where the documentation was so you know how to reference it when you have questions. Uh, and it goes through everything from overview, which is going to be like just a general how do I set it up, to something like specific on palette, uh, typography, spacing, etc. And I'm going to be going through some of this, and we're even going to be looking at how we customize full component sets. So right now we're going to start with the basics. Just how do I get my theming up? How do I swap out colors? So let's take a look at that. We're going to jump in to the application here to get started. Now specifically, we want to jump into the kickoff point for our whole application. So I'm going to close up some directories here, and what we're going to look at is the app. So this is where our whole application is kind of launched. Uh, so we've got all of our components brought in here for our various pages, um, but specifically this is where we're going to take care of all of the customizations for our theme. So we're going to need some material UI imports here, and I'm going to create a new section for that. Now we'll import from core, but we need something specific from core. We need to import from the styles of core. So it's going to be core wax styles. That's specifically what we want, and we're going to pull off two major pieces from this. We're going to pull off something called theme provider which theme provider is a component that's going to wrap all of our application that we want to change themes. Now, you're going to see what this looks like in a second, but just know that whatever theme set we want to give it, whatever's wrapped in the provide the theme provider component is getting that theme set. So we could swap themes throughout our application if we wanted to. In our case, we're just going to wrap our whole application in it so that our whole application is consistently working with the same theme set. So then, along with that, what we need is create MUI theme. This allows us to actually create the settings for our new theme. So like I said, we're going to have theme provider wrap everything. So I'm going to put it at the, as the outermost element or component.
So we've got theme provider wrapping everything. Now, right now, that's not going to do anything because we actually need to pass something to theme provider. And we need to pass it on props that's called theme. And the thing that we're going to pass it is what we create with create MUI theme. So down here, just after our imports, I'm going to create a new variable. And I'm going to call it new theme. You can call this whatever you want. I'm just calling it new theme. That makes sense to me. But please call that whatever you want to call that. And then you're going to create. You're going to use create MUI theme. And what create MUI theme is is it's a function. So we're going to call to that function, but we need to pass that function some configuration options. And we do this by passing it an object with specific properties on that object. So this is where the configuration comes in. Now these properties that I'm setting on this object, this is where the documentation from Material UI comes into play. And if we look at Palette or if we look at Overview, uh, that's going to be the settings that we're bringing in specifically where we're creating a theme. Now I'm showing this to you of how we create the theme here just like they're doing here create MUI theme. They're just calling it theme. I'm calling my new theme. Uh, again you can call it whatever you want. This is just a variable name. There's no magic there. Uh, we're just going to pass it to the theme prop on theme provider and that's going to give us all the specialness that we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to show you how we're going to update some colors. Now, the way we update colors is by using a configuration property called palette. Now, palette's going to take in an object. And there's lots of things we can do with palette, but I'm just going to start simple. Uh, I'm going to show you a top level that we can do. We can change type and there's a dark or light theme. So we can say type dark and then all of a sudden we'll have a dark theme. So I need to take new theme and pass it now to that theme prop. And like I said, I can call this whatever I want. I'm calling it new theme right now. Uh, we can call it custom theme. We can call it Myron's theme. Like doesn't particularly matter. But the key is that we pass it to this theme prop on theme provider component. Now everything that's being wrapped by that is going to get the quote unquote dark theme. So now you can see everything's a little bit darker. We go into details, everything's a little bit darker. Right? Go over to edit. Again, these are showing up light because it's the dark theme. Now you can see some areas where Maybe we're not using typography correctly, right? And it's not swapping over. So this is why you want to make sure that you're using things consistently. Or we set, switch it to light theme and everything's all light theme hunky-dory, right? Looks just like we had it before. We're going to kind of stick with light theme. And light theme is totally just the out of the box. So we don't even really have to set it. That's the default. But we want to be able to set certain other things. Now we saw keywords used when we were setting colors on buttons. Things like primary, secondary, error, success. In the palette, we can set those up. So let's say we take primary and we want to set some sort of new color for primary. So we can absolutely set a new color for primary. We can set a new color for secondary. Now we're not using secondary anywhere right now, but we'll swap something over to use secondary so we can see it changing. But we can set primary and set secondary. There's two ways to do this. If we want a custom color, we have to do it a certain way. If we want to use one of their pre-provided palette colors, so I'm going to jump over here to palette, and it's going to show you how it's working now, right? So you've got warning with all of that, and then you've got more colors down here, more color options. This is the custom color option, and we go off of that. But they've also got a color selection. So if we pull up the colors area here, 
we can see all of the colors here. Now I can use them by name. Sienna, teal. So let's use Sienna here. Well, actually, let's use something a little extreme. Let's use the um, the purple. So we'll use purple for the primary, and we're just going to use this name. So we're going to come over to our settings, and we're going to use the name purple. But the name isn't just a name. Like, we don't put it in as a string, purple. This isn't going to do anything. Same thing if we were to pick, let's... Uh, go over to colors and pick a, a really out out there one for the secondary. Let's pick the amber for secondary. So this is how you would be tempted to do it. Oh, I'm just going to put the name in there and then I'm good to go. Well, if I come over, it's giving me errors. The reason it's giving me errors is because that's not a, a valid use of what needs to be passed to primary and secondary. You need a special object, color object, that comes from this. And that's another material import. So we're going to do something here where we import colors from core. So I'm going to do an import, and I'm going to pull from the material UI core, and then I'm going to do whack colors. And then from there I can pull off those colors that you're seeing in the palette. So if I say purple and I say amber, now I can use purple and amber. And I don't use them as strings here because these are actually objects that we're getting back. We'll save that and we'll come over and we'll see what's going on there. All right, so we don't see anything here, right? Because it's not actually using any of the colors here, but let's click on the details, right? Our primaries now become purple. Now we're going to make the back button, the amber button. So we'll continue to be purple on these and you can see purple on the ads. And if I were to edit something, I can see that the disabled turns to the purple here. Right, so we have primary all over the place. You can even see the focus state here is using the primary color. Right, so all very useful there and it resets, but let's make sure that the secondary is actually getting used too. So I'm gonna change all back buttons to the secondary. So we're gonna open up the edit page and the details page. And here's the back to details. We'll change that from primary to secondary. Details, back to list. And now we can see that that's the amber. So we have the ability to have full customization here. And if I change these to primary, secondary, we'd get that as well. So we can come over and pick colors right out of here. So this is just an easy way to pick if we want an easy way to pick. Otherwise, we're going to have to go about this a little bit different. What we're going to need to do is pick a specific hex code for a color. Now, this is a hex code, hash, and then there's three digits. Uh, they're alphanumerics, so you're going to have six alphanumerics here after your hash. I think I just said three, but I meant six. So you need six alphanumerics after your hash, and that re represents a color. You can see the hash here. So these are all the hex codes for the colors that they have set up here. And you've got the name setups for general... So we have to go through and set up whatever our theme is going to be for our site. Now, typically when setting up a theme, you want to have some sort of theme to go off of, right? Now, sometimes what I'll do is I'll look up 
sites, and I'll look up what kind of themes we might do. Um, I particularly like Dribble for this, because if you come over to Dribble, uh, you can get all kinds of ideas uh, from various graphic artists out there, uh, and just see something you like. Like if you like these colors here, you can kind of go off of that. Uh, they do this auto pull down here. This is not always the most accurate or the most close, but if you hover over these, it gives you the hex codes. Uh, so you can use that as like your starting point or your your bench that you're going to start from, right? But certainly, like this is a good place for inspiration. Uh, I particularly like coming here for inspiration, uh, but you might lean towards something else, right? Just depends on what you're looking for and how you want to like have your application come across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and go, I would like to go the dark theme route, because I think that'd be pretty neat. Um, but let's, let's just like scan through, see what we're going to do, and see if we find something that we like. Now, I do have some stuff bookmarked here, I believe. Under my collection. So I've got some stuff bookmarked under my collection here. Now there's some, some nice stuff like, like this blue Aquaman sites kind of, you know, cool. Now, I say Aquaman site, it's a movie site, but like they're showing applications like that. That's a pretty cool dark theme. This one's not bad, right? They've got this light pale blue with this darker blue background. Kind of nice. Um, but I've got a couple of them in here that are kind of nice that we'll probably pick one and kind of shoot for that. This one's not bad. We've got some yellow, orange, this little pale green. Um, so those are looking pretty good. Uh, so we've got these colors here. Well, that's not bad. I don't mind that because uh, the, the grays are nice too. I even like the green gray. This one's not bad. But I mean, literally, you just go through and you find something that you like, that's going to be entertaining for you. So these are pretty good. So let's do that. Let's just totally try and go for a, uh, a dark theme. Oh, okay. A little red in there. It's not bad. Here's an IMDB app. So we've got the gold. That's like one of the primary colors. Got this blue. That's maybe a secondary. Got that green in there. Those aren't bad. This isn't bad either. These greens, these purples. It's not too bad. Color pull is not great. This isn't very colorful, but I do like the, the dark color that's being used in the back. Oh, that one's not bad either. Do you like that? And that blue would look real sharp on top of here. Ooh, let's see if it pulled that off pretty accurately. Oh, that's not bad. That's that color right there. All right, so we're going to go on this vein. I'm going to use the dark here primarily. I'm going to have to do some custom CSS in here too to get this theme fully working, but we can start giving it a bit of a jump start here. So I'm going to try and use this, this back color here. So we're talking 484B51, and I want to add that to my background color. I'm 
And I don't think I have that in app CSS. It should be in my index.css because that's where all my element selectors are. And we'll do the 484B51. Save that. Check how we're going. All right, so this has gone dark, right? Now we want to change to the dark theme probably from here. So let's go ahead and change the dark theme. So we're going to go app.js, and we're going to go type. Dark. Now it doesn't have to be the first property that I write. I just like it at the top because it's the most important thing. It's kind of setting the overall status for everything else. Now, our text isn't changing, so we're going to have to look at that to see how we change it. Uh, I'm pretty sure we just pass it a invert color option. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Uh, these colors are obviously not working anymore. No bueno. And then we want to change this as well. We're probably going to change these grays. Uh, I don't particularly like those at the moment. Uh, and let's see what the main page looks like. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to change that up. So let's see what we got over in our dribble. We're going to continue to look at the setup here. I'm going to change my primary color to this blue. I think that's going to be really sharp there. So let's take that blue. Say it's this one here. Uh, 8BB8CB. Now obviously this isn't one of the pre colors, but I could come over to the color pick picker and see if there's something that's a little close. Uh, blue's not bad, but light blue's better, so let's try light blue, see if we like it, and then maybe we don't need the custom, but then I'll show you custom with something else. Yeah, that light blue is actually not bad. We could we could probably stick with that and be pretty darn good. Yep, yep, I like it, I like it. Ooh, it even looks pretty good as the outline here. Now it'd be pretty good if it was like a little bit lighter. Oh, and large there. It's an E. And the button looks pretty good down here too. So I don't mind that so much. That's that's looking pretty pretty sharp there. Now, the footer needs some updating, the header needs some updating, right, because they're not matching all of what's going on here. Uh, if we go over back to Dribble uh, and we see some of the stuff that's being used here, we could go light color on the header, which might be kind of nice. Um, I'm going to close out of this one real quick, and we're going to come over to some of the other dark themes and see how they're handling their headers. Because I'm thinking we want something that's slightly translucent, but we're not really going to be able to tell if it's translucent unless it's over top of something. Um, some of the things that are nice is there's like these overlaps, right? That adds a bit of dynamic feel to things. Uh, so what we might do is change the header around so it looks like it's a bit of a dynamic overlap. Now the header is all custom CSS right now. So we're not really going to have too much there that's going to be theme oriented. So let's go ahead and we could switch it around to be app bar so we do get some theme oriented things. Um, but for us right now, let's go ahead and we're going to do something where we get an overlap feel with the header. Just looking at a couple examples here to see what we're seeing. 
right? Like theirs all has navigation. We don't really have any navigation to start off here. We'll have navigation later on for sure. Now this animation stuff that you see like going on here, this is something we'd bring in in a separate library to handle. Material UI doesn't handle a lot of these kind of interactive animations. So we would either be doing that by custom or some other avenue. Ooh, I like that green. Maybe that could be our secondary. Oh, they don't have it highlighted in there. Yeah, let's try and deepen the, the background for the header here. So. What we're going to do is we're going to go back over to the CSS. I'm going to grab the hex code here, and then I'm going to come over and I'm going to do some styling on the header. And this is an individual module for the header, so I'm going to replace this with that. Uh, and it's going to look exactly like how the background is, right? So it blends through, which is not what I want. But we are going to update this so that it's a little bit darker. So in VS Code, you can hover over the hex code and you can use the color picker to change things up. I'm going to change it a little bit more saturated and darker. So I want something like that. Alright, so this isn't too bad here. Now, I can go ahead and try and add some dynamic flair here, you know, really like make the thing come out at me. Uh, but, for right now, what I'm just looking to do is get something that's at least passable. Alright, so this is looking pretty pretty good, but I think I want to go just a touch darker on here. Uh, so we're going to hover over again, and we're going to go a touch darker. Save that, and then I'm going to come over to our material UI site. I'm going to grab the hex code for the light blue that we chose. Now, again, we chose that light blue. Uh, you know, we could make adjustments to it, but realistically, like this is this is our base, right? So I'm going to take the base here and, without changing anything, I'm going to change this font to that base. So we we've got that color repeated a little bit somewhere. Um, so I'm going to change color here to the base. And that's actually not looking too bad there. So we've got this color, which is changed to the base, which looks pretty good. Now the logo here for React kind of drops back, so uh, we, might, we might change that out later on, but that's really like a very small finishing touch type thing. Uh, for the rest of the content, uh, we want to find a good secondary color that's going to be able to work with us. Uh, but I do want to change my footer so it's the same dark color as the, the header here. So let's go ahead and change that around. So I'm going to copy this same color. I'm going to go over to the footer and change that. So when we come back down to the footer, you got something that's looking pretty slick down there. Now, I'm thinking we want either a gold or some sort of, like, tealy green uh, going on. So we're going to kind of look over here at their colors and see if there's something that's... Oh, I'm thinking something right along here. So we've got the light blue, and then we got that green. Hmm, that might be pretty good. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, we could go something with a mute, more muted green. I wouldn't mind an orange to accompany the blue because orange is really the uh, complete complement color to blue. Um, but actually, this amber is not too bad. Let's let's take a look at the other page uh, where we have the amber alongside the blue, and the amber really just like pops out way too much uh, next to the blue. So. It might not be the best color choice there. Uh, let's try changing it to something that's a little bit more along the green. And we've got these greens here. We've got 
something like this, which might not be too bad. This one, the A400, might not be bad. Let's try this in the footer and see how it looks before we just jump in. So I'll try the color in the footer. Oh, that's pretty sharp on the dark. Let's see if we change the, the heading to that. Yeah, that's that's pretty sharp. I could get behind that. All right, so we'll totally go that route. Um, but what we want is to start deciding those kinds of colors that we're going to go with. Now, there's lots of options for customization in the palette. Now, this shows us primary. Now, we can set primary. We can also set lights, darks, mediums for primary. We can set success. We can set info, warning, error, and secondary. So these are all things that we can set inside of there. Now, I'm going to show us a custom set for primary, and then we're going to kind of go from there. So let's say we want to set a custom color on primary. Now, for ease of use, I'm totally just going to uh, come over to the color on something over here, and we'll just take the color off. I'm looking for something that's got like a nice bright blue. See, like this has a nice bright blue, but it's not color swatched down here. I'm looking for one that has it color swatched. Ah, that's that's a super pale green. This one had had a blue. Yeah, that's okay. It's not super bright, but it's uh, let's see here, eight BB eight CB. I'm actually going to bring it over into my CSS. Oh, it's not too bad. Uh, I would like a little bit brighter than that, so let's go just a little bit right there. So we're going to go with that color. I'm just commenting that out. I'm totally using it as my color palette. So I'm going to bring this over to primary. Now, primary, we open up an object. We have a couple properties we can set on the object. We can set light. We can set main. This is the one we see as we're going over uh, light, dark, main, contrast. Uh, we can set all of them. Uh, main, dark, contrast, text. Now I'm going to comment out light, dark, and we're just going to do main. We don't necessarily have to do light, dark, and contrast text. It will try and do this on its own. If we like it, we're good. If not, then we got to switch it up. But let's go ahead and set the main to the hex code that we had from before. Now this does have to be a string value, right? So I'm totally making this a string value inside of here and hitting save and we're going to come back over and we're going to look at one of our buttons and that totally worked. Alright, so it's got this kind of soft blue. Uh, might want it to be a little bit more saturated so I'm going to come over to the color picker again and I'm going to comment this back in and we're going to come over to the color picker and we're going to come just a little bit over into saturation land. There we go.
Now this, again, this is just tweaking. Like I gotta get a little tweaky here and just like find stuff I like. So that looks a little bit better. Now you can see that it's changed the primary across the whole thing, right? Now do I necessarily want this as my primary text? Maybe not, right? But it has set across everything what primary is. Now I might say contrast text, maybe I make that like an off-white. But you see it changed the text to that white. Or it takes a color of its own. Right, so again we can get as detailed or as minimal as we want. The key is that we want to push this a little bit further so that we've got the color options. Uh, now we can do the same thing for secondary. We can do the same thing for all of the colors uh, that are necessary for our color or theme. So primary, secondary, error, warning, info, success. Uh, so I'm going to totally come over and I'm going to do this for every single one. So I'm going to do primary, secondary, error, I'm just going to put a string here right now, it will throw an error if I save this, uh, but I'm going to decide everything that I want to do. Warning, info, Also need success. All right, so these are these are all the color options that we want to be able to update. Now on error, I'm going to use the color palette over here to just set some stuff initially. Uh, so error, I'm thinking I want to go probably this pink area here. Uh, I don't really care for the red. I think the, the pink is probably better for the error messaging. Uh, so let's do the pink. So we'll do a color import for pink. And we'll use pink for error. Uh, for warning, uh, actually probably use the amber for warning. And let's grab something else for secondary. If this is our primary, let's think about what's going to be best for secondary. Maybe the lime. Uh, the deep orange might be okay. Uh, let's just go with the lime. I don't particularly care for the lime, but I'm going to get a little bit more customized with this a little bit later. So then we'll use the lime down in secondary, and then we have info and warning. Now it shows us info is this blue, and success down here is the green. So let's let's see what we want to pull for those. So for info, it showed a blue, but I'm thinking info, info, info. I kind of want this deep orange for my info. So let's do the deep orange. Again, I'm picking random stuff. This is like this is not the color palette I would want to work with. But we're we're showing how to use the theme. So deep orange. And for success success on something little flashy. Could 
people are always used to green for success. We could just go with straight green. The teal would be okay, not great. Cyan's not bad, but it's a little close to our primary. Again, I'm just picking something. Now, if I wanted to customize this, again, like I could come over here and I could find something like, oh, look, that's a, that's a bright, substantial green, or like this green here. And it has the exact same settings that the primary would do. So anytime you're going to customize any of these, you just open up an object and you set a property like main with whatever you want for the color. I have too many hashes. And then that would be it. Now success would be that color. Now obviously I don't have a bunch of things in my application that are showing those colors, right? And I've got my lime as my secondary, um, which I don't know. I'm not crazy about. I don't hate it. I don't love it. Uh, I kind of would like something more like that for my secondary. And then if that's a success, that's not so bad. That's a, that's a good jump. Uh, actually, let's see secondary there. That's a little bit nicer. Yeah, won't lie. That's, that's nicer. All right. And that's got some of the colors here. Again, like manually setting the primary has set like all the colors on our text. Uh, we want to be able to set text to a certain color. So in our theme, there's another setting. We can come down. We're still in palette, right? This is all color settings are in palette. And we want something called text. But text is going to be an object with other settings on it, one of which is going to be primary. And I'm going to set. And I highly recommend just setting the colors as you need them. I'm going to set this to a kind of off-white. So I've got primary set to off-white. There's a secondary. There's a disabled. Uh, those are, so I'll just put them in here. So these are some of the options you can add to your text color. But we come in and our uh, primary still looks like the blue. Why does it look like the blue? Let's check our details page. Because I don't think this is showing up like that on the home. And that one is. Oh, maybe I set colors in here. I did, and I forgot to comment it out. That's totally why it's doing it. Wow, that was that was a roundabout sort of way to get to that. So this is the color that we set. Jeez. Okay. Uh, my bad. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in here. And we're just going to go back. So we're going to keep that and keep this and we no longer have the other one. Okay, that's that's a little bit more of what we're expecting to see, but I still need this to change. Right? So these colors still need to become our primary text color. Now this one is totally working off of um, Another color choice that we made, uh, and I think that was details. Do we? Yes, we totally said primary here. So let's move the primary and see what it does by default. Yep, so it's doing this by default. We want the default on all of these to be what our app default for primary text would be. 
so this is what we're looking to get out of this. Um, now, obviously, uh, I say obviously, I don't mean obviously, but uh, if we come over here and we look at this text coming in, we could have that color there, and we can see we've got the other just scrolling up. All right, we can see palette, primary, light, main, dark, right? And if we come down here, if we look at this on the text. Primary, secondary, disabled. We're going to try disabling the dark theme again, see how this works out for us. Well, it's using the default text color there, but it's not using it on these. Uh, it might not be doing it because we don't have something wrapping it. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Uh, I'm going to do some more adjusting here, but we're going to look at more adjustments uh, when we come back. Uh, what I want to do right now is I want to just have the overall uh, thing set up here for you so you've got this. I've shown you how to do some theming. We'll come back with some more like tactical, how do we get this thing to look the way we want it to look. 